Hi everyone, welcome to Hard NMR Made Easy Problem Number Two. If you haven't seen Problem One, you can click on the cards here, here, yeah. to, watch, to watch Frank and I explain Problem Number One. And so we're going to show you the problem on the screen, and if you could take a few minutes to work it out and then come back here, that'd be great. And so here it is. And so again, just take a few minutes to work this out, and we'll be right back. Hit pause. All right, hey guys. Um, so real quickly, if you, hopefully you got the NMR. There are two possible answers. We're gonna go through both of them. But first, if any of you guys are looking for the clutch pro, clutch. Yeah. If any of you guys are looking for the clutch prep uh, promo code, it is Orgo Made Easy Dash Pen, and you can get twenty percent off clutch if you're looking to get some early prep off of um, them. They have a massive video library, and if you want more info, clutch prep, you can click on the video in the cards right here. All right, I'm gonna hand it back to them. So, like Frank said, there are two possible solutions, and we're gonna go over them right now. Uh, the first parts of each solution is the same because we're essentially finding all the fragments and looking at the NMR spectrum. Okay, so real quickly, I'm just gonna write the formula on the board and we'll get started. So it is C12, H17, and O. And so if you haven't seen problem one, go look at it because we go over DOUs and integrations and everything. So real quickly, I'm gonna figure out the degrees of unsaturation for this problem. It's gonna be DOU. Okay, so if you found your DOU, you'll realize that it's equal to five. And the thing about degrees of unsaturation, you wanna look out for when the DOU is greater than or equal to four. Okay, so the DOU greater than or equal to four means we most likely have a benzene. And if you need more in-depth, detailed explanation about that, you can look back at problem number one where we go more into depth. And so the second thing we want to do is actually look at the question stem because that can also tell us more about our fragments. And so we know that there's an IR stretch near 1700. And so if you look that up in your table or some sort of shift table that you have, you'll note that around that area is a carbonyl. And so pretty much what we have now already, I'll draw it over here, is our benzene from a degree of saturation and a carbonyl. And just note that this carbonyl is most likely going to be attached to two things on both sides. If we look at both of these, we have four degrees of unsaturation here and one from this carbonyl right here, giving us a total of five. And so right off the bat, we get rid of all the DOUs. Okay. So the second thing we're going to do is set up our awesome table. And if you need more help figuring out what an awesome table is, again, refer to problem one where we go more in depth into what that is. So also a quick note about this problem, we're going to skip the integration step because it actually gives us the number of hydrogens per um, signal in the problem. Okay, and just real quickly, we're going to have the awesome table right here. Okay, and so now we're going to fill out this awesome table. And so we actually have seven signals. And so we're going to label them A, Okay, and these letters are gonna to refer to the shifts that we see here. And so just real quickly. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do when you fill out your awesome table is to look for your iconic fragments. If you don't know what those are, you can look at our Instagram page, which is just Orgo Made Easy. And so, if you have that pulled up, you can see that we have an iconic fragment right here with the three hydrogens with two neighbors paired with the two hydrogens with five neighbors. Now on our Instagram page, it says two hydrogens with three neighbors, but we know that this can lead to something later on and that this is still an iconic fragment, which is as shown where we have a CH3 bonded to a CH2 and so this would refer to the three hydrogens with two neighbors and two hydrogens with three neighbors. But we see from here that this has five neighbors. And so what we need then is two more hydrogens on the other side to make a total of five neighbors. Okay, and we can't just do that without anything being in the awesome table to represent this pair right here. 
And so if we refer back to this awesome table again, we can see that we have another two hydrogens with two neighbors that can correspond to this one right here. And so just real quickly, I'm going to label these to correspond to the letters right here. And so G with three hydrogens and two neighbors is going to be right here. And then we have the iconic fragment pair of F, which is two hydrogens and five neighbors, that I'll label right here. And then this last guy right here, we know is uh, letter number D, with two hydrogens and two neighbors. Because? And also there are no other two hydrogens in our table that have two neighbors as well. And so I'm just going to put a check mark next to these that we have figured out. And, that, and so that leaves us with A, B, C, and E. We know from the iconic fragment page again that we have three hydrogens and zero neighbors, so that equals a methyl group. And so we can actually see that we have two of them right here, um, C and E. And so I'm going to write those down. And it's important to keep these shifts in mind as you go on because they do mean different things with 2.0 and 3.5, so we'll keep those in mind. And again, I'll check off these two because we have them done. Okay, just like that, we only have two more letters. However, if we go back to what we were talking about in the beginning, we know, based off the DIUs, that there's a benzene. So the thing about benzene is there are three different configurations you can have if it has four hydrogens. And you can learn more about those if you look at our last video once again. And so we know from our awesome table that two hydrogens have one neighbor, and there's a second set of two hydrogens that also have one neighbor. And so that's going to lead us to the configuration right here, because this hydrogen has one neighbor, this hydrogen has one neighbor, and same with the other side, and that corresponds to what we see in the awesome table. And so we can actually check these off as well. Okay, I'm just going to label these as my fragments. So now we're going to count how many carbons we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm not going to count the ends because they're going to be attached to something. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. If we look at our equation, we know we have 12 carbons right here. So that's going to give us zero. We have zero left. 17 hydrogens that sometimes when the molecule is so big, you don't count the hydrogens because it's really cumbersome. But in this case, it's pretty small, so I think we can. So we have three. 5, 7, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And so in this case, we actually have zero hydrogens left as well. And I'm going to skip nitrogen real quick, but for oxygen, from our carbonyl, we have one oxygen right here. And then nitrogen, we also have one of. And so because we used up all of our hydrogens and we still have a leftover nitrogen, that means that this nitrogen cannot be connected to any hydrogens. Therefore, it has to be used as a linking piece with the rest of our fragments. So I'm actually going to draw this in in my fragment category as a nitrogen connected to three things that we know can't be hydrogens. And that will help us later on. And so finally, once we have all the fragments figured out and we have all of our uh, sections used up, we can begin putting them together. And to, the, to do that, we need to look at a shift table, which I'm going to pull up right here. And this will just be very helpful in putting things together. And so right away, looking at our awesome table, we can see a methyl group here with a 3.5 shift. And I said this would be important earlier on, and so we're going to address that now. And so we know, because it's such a high shift, that it has, there's something, something has to be special about it. And so it can't be this because we know we don't have an alcohol. It can't be an alkene because it figures in the saturation, it wouldn't fit. It can't be a benzene because that's too low of a shift. So the only thing we're left with, really, is this nitrogen giving us a pretty high shift. Now, this still isn't 3.5, so we have to add something else to make it a greater shift. And we can do that by using kind of the rules of resonance and having an electro electron withdrawing group near that nitrogen. And so what that's going to look like is having nitrogen here, and we'll have the methyl group. But then there also has to be an electron withdrawing group, and so we'll throw in the carbonyl group as well, connected to something else. So this gives us a starting point that we can build upon because we know nitrogen has to have, be bonded 
to three things, and so we can grow upon this. And so the next thing we want to do is look at the shifts again. And so we know we have fragment D, F, and G, and G can't be connected to anything because it's a complete methyl group, but D can because it only has two hydrogens. So this is actually going to have something here. And so if we refer back to the Austin awesome table, we see that D has a shift of 2.6. And 2.6 is greater than just an alkene, alkane by itself. And so it has to be connected to something that is willing to give it that shift. So if we look at our shift table again, it might be the benzene. So that can be, that's a little low. So we see again here, our nitrogen has a 2.2 to 2.8 shift. And so it's likely that this fragment here will be connected to the nitrogen as well. And so if we drag that, if we drag that over and draw it here, we can add on to the chain that we already have. We get this, and so I'm just going to draw a check mark next to the fragments that we've already used. Just remember that we have another methyl group that we have to use. And so now what we have left is a methyl group and a benzene. And so if we put, if we put this methyl group over here, that would complete the chain and we'd be stuck. So we're not going to do that. So the only other thing we can do is put this benzene right here. So I'm going to drive that over. And we know the hydrogens have to be in this configuration. So that leaves us for one point of attachment. And we only have one fragment left. So that's going to be our methyl group. And we want to make sure that this positioning makes sense with our awesome table and the shift we saw in the problem. So if we go over here, we see that this methyl group has a 2.0 shift. And if we look at our shift table, we see a hydrogen off a of carbon off of a benzene with a 2.2 shift which is moderately close to a 2.0. And so here we have our first plausible structure. And if I was to draw this in bond line notation, just real quickly. And so this is just the same structure in bond line notation, just so it looks a little nicer. But again, this is option number one. So if you got this, congratulations, you got the right answer. Also, this is the solution that Frank and I actually got, and this is the one we prefer out of the two. And now we're gonna go on to the next possibility. Okay, so now we're going to go over the second solution to this problem, and we're pretty much going to go through the same thought process as we did earlier, but there are going to be a few different positioning of the fragments. And so again, we're going to look at this nitrogen and this methyl group that has a 3.5 shift. So on both solutions, that can't change because we need something with resonance to make that shift greater. And so I'm going to redraw this nitrogen with the methyl group. In order for this methyl group to have a higher shift, we need to have an electron withdrawing group off of this nitrogen. Which will be con connected to something else. And this nitrogen, as we said before, is also going to be connected to something else. Okay, so we're just going to put a check mark next to the ones that we've already used. So this nitrogen, this carbonyl, and one of the methyl groups. So what we have left is another methyl group, this alkane chain, and the benzene ring. And so methyl groups are usually the easiest to arrange just because they're such a simple fragment. So if we look over here at our second methyl group, we see it has a, a shift of 2.0. And so looking at our shift table, we see a shift of 2.0 to 2.2, which means that this will likely be the methyl group off of the carbonyl. And so I'm gonna draw that in right now and draw a check next to the last methyl group that we have. And so now we're left with two fragments. We're left with this alkane chain and this benzene ring. And if we put this alkane chain off of this nitrogen, like before in the other solution, that would end our structure and we'd be stuck. And so we know it has to be the benzene ring. So I'm going to draw that in. And we know there's one point of attachment here. And so we're going to bring in this alkane chain down here. And so the last thing you want to do again is check to make sure that this last possibility can fit with your shift table and awesome table. And so if we look at uh, the signal letter D, it has a shift of 2.6. And looking at our shift table to make sure it makes sense, we see a benzene with a carbon with a hydrogen at 2.2. Now 2.6 and 2.2 are kind of close, um, so this structure will work. But again, we prefer the earlier structure more due to less discrepancies within the shift table and the structure. And so now we're just going to show you a picture of this solution in bond line notation that we saw online. Please oh. yeah, there you go. Yeah. 
And so here it is, and it looks a lot nicer. And yeah, so if you also got this solution, then you're also correct. This is the answer that we found online. And again, Frank and I solved for the other solution uh, when we were doing this problem separately. And so both answers are okay for this NMR. If you got either of them, congratulations. Just make sure that you understand the process. Thanks for watching. If you haven't seen problem one, be sure to check it out where we go more in depth into this whole process. Uh, be sure to like the video down here. And if you want to see alerts, click on the bell. And be sure to subscribe, and you'll see us in later videos in the future. Bye. Bye? That was too serious. <laughs> Bye. I'll just wait. You know, I'll just wait. Okay. It's over. <laughs> it's already it's too late. Alright, see you guys. Bye. Whoops. This is not going well. <laughs> what happened? It's okay. We can like cut this part out, right? Yeah. yeah. 1700 uh, centimeter inverse centimeter? Yeah. I just looked at it and it made me laugh. Okay, so now we have our awesome. <laughs> You're shaking a bit. <laughs>